Well, hey folks, welcome back. Level 5 of Civil War Secret Missions, The Great Train Raid of 1861. Uh, real Hollywood stuff here, this whole train raid. Uh, the level doesn't exactly portray it entirely historically accurately, but uh, it's very, very interesting stuff, and so we're going to take a look at what went down. So here we Locomotive go. Locomotive power became a decisive resource for both sides of the war. Nothing could move thousands of men and their supplies as efficiently as trains. Both North and South carried out daring attacks to capture or disrupt the enemy's railroad shipments. In 1861, Colonel Thomas Stonewall Jackson discovered that coal was being shipped in large quantities from the Ohio Valley to Union naval bases in Baltimore. That fuel would be used to power Navy warships. Jackson devised a covert plan and ordered the 5th Virginia Infantry to attack the B&O Railroad and capture as many railroad cars and supplies as possible. Men, you did real good work in your last mission, so we got us a new assignment as a reward. There's a locomotive up ahead that's got mechanical problems. We're gonna hijack that train, then move it onto the main station and blow it up entirely, so no more trains can go in or out. How's that sound? We'll make a short stop to send a fake message from its telegraph station, all right? All right here we go, and once again, there's that, uh, that dialogue getting cut off. That's disappointing. Look at this, we've got the Sharps sniper rifle. Beautiful, beautiful weapon uh, here. Already a fine rifle and then a uh, great big telescope here on the front uh there was a fellow named california joe in the civil war who uh, who used a sharps sniper rifle to uh, to great effect and don't mistake this sharps rifle for sharps rifles the uh the sean bean guys uh that was early early 1800s that was way before this rifle came out so um similar name Completely different people, different weapon. So here we go. This idea, this level here, here is uh, going to have us running in here and tagging this train. And we're going to capture it. And we're going to send a fake message. And then we're going to blow up the engine. Which is not exactly how the great train raid of 1861 went down. But... Uh, I don't really see how you could make the real train raid into a very interesting level because it happened over several days and quite a few people involved. Here we go, We've got our little uh, uh, little duck shoot gallery game here. All these fellows, where were these guys two minutes ago? I mean, it's fun to use the Gatling gun, but. Also, take a look when when the Gatling gun's not firing. Look at the very bottom; the models being cut off. Oops. All right. So the Great Train Raid of 1861 was put together by Stonewall Jackson. You remember Stonewall Jackson from the first level. So here he is alive again, which means we've gone backwards in time. In fact, uh, this, this is the very, very early opening days of the war. Uh, Virginia hadn't even joined the, uh, the Confederacy yet, uh, but the general idea was Harper's Ferry was a bottleneck, an area where hundreds of trains moved through all the time. Stonewall Jackson saw it as an opportunity uh, and went in there and at a time when he knew many trains would be passing along, he blocked off two ends of the, uh, of the track and uh, trapped a whole bunch of trains uh, engines and uh, and their tenders and all their stuff uh, along something like a 40 mile stretch. The numbers seem to vary a little bit here, uh, but uh, historical sources seem to agree that it was somewhere in the number of 50, 50 to 60 trains that were captured in here. Now the idea was to capture them entirely, uh, but uh, but that wasn't really going to work, and the changing political situation uh, made that very very difficult. So they started destroying trains and engines, uh, just setting things on fire, burning down roundhouses, destroying bridges. Ah! Not sure how that happened. It's these fences again. 
Uh, and at one point, when the idea was to move uh, a number of these trains into the south, since the south had a very, very poor rail system and very little rail infrastructure, uh, unfortunately, some overzealous Confederates uh, burned a bridge they shouldn't have and trapped a number of the... Oh, there's another one of our historical portraits. Uh, so unfortunately, a number of the trains became trapped, and Robert E. Lee had decided at this point that the idea would be to destroy the infrastructure anyway, uh, so orders came down to just burn everything. Uh, dismantle engines, take things apart, throw trains into the river, if possible, uh, just ruin everything. But uh, Stonewall Jackson realized that there was an opportunity here. Uh, now, there was no longer an opportunity to run the captured trains along the rails uh, down into the Confederacy, down into the South, but there was an opportunity to capture them. So he got this fella, Thomas R. Sharp, who was working for the Confederacy, uh, who had at one point been a railroad employee. Check this out. This guy's firing a Springfield rifle. You can never get a Springfield rifle in this game. But the enemy can. Great. So, anyway, Thomas, L, uh, Thomas R. Sharp came up with an idea to take the 13 least damaged locomotives, because remember, they tried to burn them all at this point, but luckily, locomotives aren't really... Jesus. Locomotives aren't really that affected by fire, it turns out. Uh, and so the idea was he took 13 locomotives, completely dismantled them, and moved them by horse and carriage over a mountain down to the next set of tracks that could be connected into the Confederate rail line. So they actually moved the, the pieces of these engines 38 miles along dirt roads and then rebuilt them and sent them along the way. And amazingly enough, at the end of the war, the engines were returned. All but one of them came back to the B&O Railroad. Uh, one had been dismantled. Uh-oh. This raid's not looking too good. Uh, one engine had been used as the power plant for one of the Confederate ironclads, but the other, uh, the other locomotives were still intact. And so they were given back at the end of the war. Uh, and I, I just I find that very, uh, very amusing that it all all worked out. Uh, but here's something that is even funnier. Uh, there was a fellow named Garrett who was the owner and president of the B&O Railroad. And he always remembered, you know, years after the war, he remembered Stonewall Jackson's destruction of the properties. Uh, and he actually admired how the Confederate Colonel Thomas Sharp with 35 men had moved 14 of his biggest locomotives, uh, including a Hayes Camel 198, a Mason locomotive, and a Dutch wagon, over 40 miles of dirt roads from Martinsburg to Strasburg, Virginia. Uh, and when the indispensable William Prescott Smith, B&O's uh, railroad tree chief of transportation, died prematurely at age 47 in 1872, Garrett hired Thomas Sharp to replace him as the master of transportation. So how about that? Long after the war, the guy who steals all your trains and then returns them afterwards, let's just give him a job. Let's, uh, th this guy clearly knows what he's doing, and, uh, and it all worked out. Uh, there's a lot of controversy over the raid. Some people seem to disagree about how it happened, even if it happened. Uh, there's a lot of... Uh, a lot of conflicting information out there. Uh, Stonewall Jackson, of course, did not survive the war. Uh, hell, he didn't survive the, the year. Uh, but um, but there are a lot of contemporary accounts, so people are pretty sure something happened. There's lots of historical information over in, uh, in that area. Lots of nice plaques and things. This is where a train was stolen. This is where something was set on fire. So as you can see, my raid is not going particularly well. All of the other participants are dead. Oh, here's another letter. Dear Father, I've put off writing to you for 
several days in the hopes of receiving letters, blah, 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 blah. There, there's nothing of substance in these letters. I'm not sure they're even authentic letters. I think it's just some cute thing that a, uh, uh, that a content generator came up with. Anyway, the idea of this level here is you capture the train, you send a fake message for some reason, and then you blow up this train and the uh, and the end of the track. Uh, so that's that's a decent analog, a decent metaphor for uh, for what happened. What actually happened was that, but on a far far larger scale, um, something like three hundred. Uh, Trains and, and cars and various things were uh, were all destroyed. Uh, let's see here. I'm trying to remember. Some of the stuff was captured. Some of the stuff was destroyed. But uh, but all in all, it was it was very uh, it was very impressive that it all went uh, went the way it did uh, with as few injuries and casualties and. All that good stuff here. So you can see here in the uh, in the game, I've uh, dropped the Henry rifle. The Henry rifle is a lot of fun. I like that gun, but uh, it's just a little too powerful for some of this stuff. Uh, since I have the double damage loaded in with my points, the uh, the Henry rifle requires quite a bit less strategy. So we'll play with the Spencer. It's a little bit slower. Also, it does more damage, so we've got more opportunity to see some of that silly. Uh, Silly, uh, ready for liftoff type physics that we keep running into. That's not the game's fault. That's uh, that's because I invested points into extra damage. Uh, normal damage does not cause guys to go flying across the sky. Good work. There's our map. All right, got a bonus objective finally. And we'll just kind of, kind of look around, see what's what's going on here. All right, there's our, uh, there's our end of level. Destroy the train. Charge. Can't shoot it. Have to touch it. Well, let's get to it. That appears to be a, let's see, one, two, three, four. Uh, okay, that is a 320 engine, I believe. Uh, you count the front wheels, you count the big drive wheels, and then any rear wheels. Oh. So there it is, one barrel of gunpowder. And that's it again. You can see they're starting to run out of ideas here, but... Uh, but that was the last Confederate level. After this, it's all United States levels. It's all uh, all Union side stuff. And so we'll start to see our uh, our drive-by encounters with some of the Union generalship. Uh, I don't believe Abe Lincoln's in the game, but other uh, other important characters certainly are. We've got U.S. Grant and uh, and other folks. So that's it for this level. Not sure which uh, which uh, game we're gonna do next. Maybe uh, maybe we'll do a Gettysburg thing here. Anyway, that's it for this one. Tune in next time. Bye now.